To find the derivative of the natural logarithm function, we need to use the definition of the derivative. So what we need to do is take the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h and change f of x to ln of x. When we do that, we get the limit as h approaches 0 of ln of x plus h minus ln of x divided by h. You'll notice that if we went ahead and put 0 in place of h, we'd end up with 0 over 0, meaning we probably need to do some simplifying here before we can actually do that derivative. So using the quotient rule for logarithms, I'm going to take these two logarithms and I'm going to combine them together so that I have ln of x plus h divided by x. Remember when logarithms are subtracted, you can combine them to a single one with the arguments divided. So we have limit as h approaches 0, ln x plus h over x, that entire quantity, divided by h. Now in the next few steps I'm going to go ahead and try and do some simplifying. I'm going to divide x into both terms on top inside of that logarithm and where I'm dividing by h here I'm going to change that to being a multiplication by the reciprocal. So what I end up getting is limit h approaches 0, 1 over h, remember that was the divide by h that we had before, ln of 1 plus h over x. That's the result of dividing the top by x. So I had x over x which was 1 and h over x for the other term. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that number 1 over h that's sitting out in front and I'm going to move it so that it becomes a power. Again I'm just using one of the rules for logarithms that said multipliers can come inside of logarithms as powers. That leaves me with the limit as h approaches 0 of ln of 1 plus h over x raised to the 1 over h. The next step, I move the limit inside of the logarithm. So now I have the natural logarithm of the limit as h approaches 0 of 1 plus h over x raised to the 1 over h power. To be able to figure out what that limit is, I'm going to go ahead and graph the, the thing that I'm taking the limit of with some different values. So some values of h equals 1 h equals 0.5, h equals 0.1, and h equals 0 0.01. As I go through these different values of h, notice that the shape of the graph changes quite a bit at first. So it starts out with one piece dropping down at the asymptote and going up, but as I make the h value smaller and smaller, it starts to approach a limiting value. In fact, it starts to approach the function that you see here. And this is the graph of the function y equals e raised to the 1 over x. So back in our limit, we just figured out that as I get h values smaller and smaller, that expression gets closer and closer to e to the 1 over x. Now if I go ahead and take the ln of e to the 1 over x, the natural logarithm and the e power will cancel each other out because they're inverses of each other and that leaves me with 1 over x meaning that the derivative of the natural logarithm function is 1 over x. So I've gone ahead and I've written that out right here. Now you need to be real careful when using this formula and the reason for that is that the domain of the natural logarithm function that I'm taking the derivative of here is positive x values. That means that if I'm trying to find the slopes of tangent lines, this only makes sense for positive x values. But the expression on the right, which is the reciprocal function, makes sense for all x values except x equals 0. This means that you could put a number like x equals minus 3 into the derivative and get negative 1 third, yet 
it makes no sense to put negative 3 into the natural logarithm function. So be real careful when you're plugging numbers into the derivative to make sure that they actually make sense in the regular function because all the derivative is telling you is the slopes of the tangent lines on that original function. Now more generally, the derivative of log base a of x is equal to 1 over ln of a times 1 over x. So when we put a base a here, we get this extra factor here in front. Let me show you where that comes from. So suppose I have the function g of x equals log base a of x. To try and figure out what the derivative of log base a of x is, I'm going to convert this back to an exponential. So that exponential is going to have a base of a. Its input is going to be g of x, because g of x is the output on the logarithm. And its output is going to be x, since the log base a took an input of x. In other words, we're going to have a to the g of x equals x. So the input came from the output, and the output came from the input. In the next step, I'm going to go ahead and take the derivatives of both sides of this equation. And to take the derivative, I'm going to need to use the chain rule. In this chain rule, the outside function is going to be a to the x. The g inside function g of x is going to be unknown. The derivative of a to the x is ln of a, a to the x. So when I take the derivative of both sides here, on the left-hand side, I'm going to get the derivative of a to the x, which was ln of a, a to the x. But then I'm going to put g of x into that, and then multiply that by the derivative of the inside function, which is g prime of x. On the right-hand side, I'm just taking the derivative of x, which is 1. Now that I've gone ahead and written out this expression, I'll solve it for g prime of x. And when I do that, I'm going to end up getting g prime of x is equal to 1 over ln of a times x. The reason for that is because remember that this expression right here is just x. So it's really just x. So when I solve for g prime of x, I get 1 over ln of a times x. And that's what we had originally written up here above.